Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve some practice questions from chapter 16. We have nine questions and let's start with the first one. If you withdraw $500 from your saving accounts and deposit it in your checking account, then the question is asking how much M1 will change and how much M2 will change. As you know, saving accounts are M2. So you're taking money from M2 account and then deposit into your checking account. Checking account is M1. Therefore, M1 is going to increase by $500. And the next question is, what about M2? M2 includes everything in M1 plus some additional accounts like saving accounts. So we are taking money from here. Saving account decreases by 500, but M1 increases by 500. Since M2 includes everything in M1, M2 does not change. Okay, because you are just changing the account. M1 is also an M2 account. Therefore, saving account decreases by 500, but checking account increases by 500. Both are M2 accounts. M2 doesn't change. But since saving is not an M1 account, M1 increases by 500. The next question is about reserve ratio. So a bank has $30,000 in deposits and $5,400 in reserves. If you draw the T account for the banks, okay, here you have the liabilities, here you have the assets. Deposits is a liability account, so you have $30,000 here. And then reserves here is 5,400. And the question is asking what is the reserve ratio? Reserve ratio is equal to required reserves divided by deposits times 100 will give you a nice percentage. So for that reason, required reserves is 5,400 divided by 30,000 times 100. We will solve this question. It's 18%. So the reserve ratio is 18%. So what does that mean? That means 18% of deposits has to stay in the bank. It's for safety. Okay, we want banks to keep some uh, assets inside the bank. Don't give that as loan to the people. And 18% of it has to stay in the bank. The remaining can be used as loan. Let's look at the next question. Suppose a bank has $3,000 in reserves. So we can draw again T account. This is the deposits. That's $25,000. And reserves 3000 and 10% reserve requirement. So this bank is required to keep 10% of this number in the reserves. Let's find out $25,000 times 10% is 2,500. So 2,500 is the required reserve. But banks sometimes keep more money than required reserve. As you can see here, reserve account is 3,000. So this bank has excess reserve. 2,500 is required. The remaining is excess. Therefore, excess reserve is 3,000 minus 2,500, which is $500. Let's look at next question. You have again assets and liabilities, deposits 10,000, reserves 1,200, loans 8,800. As you see, assets are equal to liabilities. The total amount in assets equal to liabilities. So we need to find out the reserve ratio for this bank. If we assume that there is no excess reserve, reserve ratio is all reserves are required divided by deposits times 100. So which in this case 12%. It's a different question now. If the required reserve ratio is 10%, so if the required reserve ratio is 10%, then we know that reserve should have minimum $1,000, which it has more than that, then this bank has access reserve of 200. How do we find? We subtract 1,000 from 1,200. And that's the excess reserve, if the required reserve ratio is 10%. Next question, when the Fed purchase government bonds, the money supply, if you remember, by purchasing government bonds, bonds are going to the Fed, and Fed gives money, dollars, to the banks, okay? So for, for that reason, money supply increases. When the money is not scarce, that means the money is available, 
the rate that banks from each other, which is we call it federal funds rate, goes down because they don't need money. So the rate they borrow from each other, which is an over rate, goes down. That's the idea of open market operations and purchasing government bonds. Let's think about reverse to just remember if Fed sells government bonds, Fed is selling government bonds, so bonds are going to the banks. In return, dollars are going to the Fed. So the banks has less dollars, okay, less dollars. So they borrow money over night from each other, that's called federal funds rate. And this rate increases, federal funds rate increases because the dollars became scarce when the Fed uh, sells government bonds, okay? For that reason, FFR goes up. That's the case for selling government bonds. And this is the case for buying government bonds. Let's see this example. What is the change in money supply when the Fed purchases $700 worth of bonds? So $700 goes to the banks because the bonds go to Fed. This is the bond, okay? And now banks has a reserve ratio. Remember here, the reserves are increasing by $700, okay? But this is going to be an excess reserve. So therefore, the banks usually don't keep this money in the bank because the banks earn money by lending the money out. Therefore, they are going to lend this money to the public. And if that happens, the $700 is going to create more money. And the question is how much more money? Remember, we have the concept of money multiplier. We find out how much money is created in the banking system through lending by using money multiplier. So what is money multiplier? Money multiplier is the reciprocal of reserve ratio, 1 over R. And in this case, it's 1 over 0 0.14. Okay, not 14, 0 0.14, you need to write R in decimal form. And 1 over 0 0.14 is equal to equivalent to 7.15 so now with that money we can create create a total amount of money initial amount initial purchase which is 700 times the money multiplier 7.15 which is equal to five thousand dollars so by just purchasing $700 of bond, that means injecting $700 into reserve account of the banks, banking system can create money up to 5000 because of the money multiplier. So let's look at this question, number eight. If the discount rate is lowered, so let's remember what a discount rate is. The Fed also lends money to the banks. Okay, Fed lends money to the banks, commercial banks. And that rate is called discount rate. If discount rate is lowered, that means it's cheap to borrow money from Fed. If that is the case, banks are going to borrow more from the Fed because now it's cheaper to borrow. And when they borrow more, their reserves are going to increase because they will have more money. Let's see this question. In a fraction reserve banking system, an increase in reserve requirements so if reserve requirements increases, let's say from 10% to 20%, okay, think of that case. So what does that mean? That means banks now require to keep more assets, more money in the reserves, in the reserve account. That's what it says when there's an increase in reserve requirement. So let's look at if money multiplier is going to change. If R is 10%, money multiplier is 1 over 0 0.110. If R is 20%, money multiplier is 1 over 0.2 is 5. So money multiplier for sure is going to decrease. If the reserve requirement increases from 10 to 20, money multiplier is going to decrease. We need to find this option says decrease, decrease. And now we need to find out what happens to money supply. If money multiplier is smaller, you are going to create less money. Therefore, money supply decreases as well. So both should be a decrease because now you are here. If money multiplier is 10, each additional dollar multiplied by 10 compared to each additional dollar multiplied by 5. 
I hope this video is helpful. Thank you for watching.